All right, I'm into the VR. All right, and uh, I wanted to see what Thrill Seeker's up to. I dig this dude. He's always about like showing new VR and AR, and I'm like fascinated by it. Uh, let's check it out and let's see what's he's saying. He's saying Boneworks is the best VR game ever created. Let's check it out. There are games that are good enough to make you fall in love with a certain character or franchise or even turn you into a lifelong fan of a certain console. But then there are the games that make you fall in love. Oh my God. Was that The Rock and Bill Gates? <laughs> this is a weird pairing. Wow. Did that actually happen with the fucking Xbox? Why don't I remember that shit? The Rock and Bill Gates in the same room together does not make any sense whatsoever. None. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Wait, hold on. Uh, I don't even know if the eyebrow worked. Did the eyebrow work, Pepe? It did? Okay, cool. So, but then there are the games that make you fall in love with gaming itself. Today, I want to talk about a game that made me truly fall in love with virtual reality and its potential, and in my opinion, is the best VR Crazy game big, that right? has ever been created yet, of course. We're talking about Boneworks. Ironically, a very divisive VR game, so not, I'm not familiar with Boneworks. Some people I don't even know what it is. Play it because it'll make them ill. But there's something really magical about Sounds fun. Boneworks. And I want to break it down step by step because even though it's got issues, there are lessons to be learned here about how VR games should be made, but more importantly, how people should be able to play a VR game. I've been wanting to make this video for a long time now, so here's a full dive on what makes Boneworks work. To start this one off, I want to talk about a very real problem with most VR games, and it's likely the reason why most high-cost VR games end up flopping. There's an ironic paradox of VR game development that isn't always the case, but I'm sure it's something that you've noticed. VR games that should be good, that have a solid <laughs> IP, a solid development team, and good funding behind them, end up being terrible. Two of the most recent examples being Medal of Honor Above and Beyond and Sniper Elite VR, but the list doesn't stop there. And let's just be real, as many hours as I have put in something like Skyrim VR, I have to mod the game for it to even be playable. Doom, another great franchise, this should work in VR, but it just doesn't. And I have a theory here. These expensive VR games with reputable studios behind them end up making bad VR games, not because they're incapable of making making a good game, but because of two main reasons. One, they don't really know VR. Most of these game studios aren't VR studios by trade. So the things- I mean, it's, it's, it's again, like the, the whole space, it's pretty fucking new. It's like embryonic stage, you know? And what are we expecting in the embryonic stage? We're expecting a whole bunch of people that don't know fuck hit it. And, and a lot of them are going to hit the wall and fall down hard and break many bones. <laughs> There's going to be some that are slick, slick, right? There's going to be some that, that know exactly what you want. The experiences, right? They're going to give you those experiences you want. There's going to be some that, that around the corner, just slick, right? And then there's going to be some that just uh, smack into a wall and don't know what the fuck they're doing, man that we VR users expect to be shipped <laughs> in a game just aren't included. Think about smooth turn, snap turn, multi-controller support, etc. And two, which is the much bigger deal, so many developers just play it safe. Maybe it's because they aren't skilled enough to not play safe, but more than likely it's because they're too scared to break the boundaries. Anything that can possibly make anyone motion sick or disoriented seems to be cut from these games to where the only thing you have left in your high action World War II shooter is a character model that moves half a mile an hour with floating arms and levels with practically no verticality and stale movement in general. The games just end up being boring and it's because they right. have to play it safe if you right. are a big studio branching out to make a vr game Liability, even with the dude. best intentions in Liability. mind imagine going to your executives with this pitch we're going to add a feature into our game that may make 20 percent of all users hurl yeah that's probably not going to go over too well <laughs> but this is where bone works this is the crazy part you know like until the technology is there where it can actually satisfy 99.9 percent .9 of people's fucking health conditions it's going to be a very fucking weird space man because everybody's going to be worried about the liabilities of hurting people and being sued and man isn't that always the way it's it's really crazy to me that we want to keep everybody safe like imagine right imagine 
that you're putting this thing on for the first time and you do get sick, right? And then you're like, well, fuck this. This ain't for me. That would be the rational thing, right? And then, but imagine that there's somebody out there that puts it on and gets sick, vomits, falls down, hurts himself, breaks their wrist, goes to the ER, comes back, broken wrist, puts the fucking headset on again and says, let me try it again. <laughs> These are the people that we're trying to protect, right? Not only that, guy fucking gets sick again, pukes all over his fucking wrist cast, goes down, trips down the stairs, breaks his fucking leg, goes to the hospital, fucking almost fucking just flatlining, heart attack, literally gets back, resuscitated, back to his house, now has a leg and a wrist fucking cast, puts on the VR thing again. <laughs> These are the people that we're worried about. I want to call Darwinism out right now on this shit and just say, let them die. <laughs> like this is called natural selection. We are so worried about keeping people safe. <laughs> like we are so worried. This is bad for the fucking future of humanity. We are keeping these people safe and they will, they will, they will, they will, propagate they will they will they will have babies and they will spread their genetics amongst us and it is a very scary thing man it is a very scary thing can we not worry about the liability can we not worry about it anymore if you like it you should like it and wear it and do it man in the 80s everything was made of metal we had trucks that were literally made of metal people and you know what there was risk involved with your toys you could actually hurt yourself with toys if you got mad at your best friend tony and you got pissed off you took your talking truck and you fucking shuttled it into his head and he had a big old gash in his fucking head but he never did that shit to you again no did you tony you never did that shit to me again I can't do that now because all the toys are made of flimsy little plastic. God damn it. Chris literally said, <laughs> you. We're going to make not just a game, but a hardcore <laughs> physics playground with intense verticality. No more metal lunchboxes explode. And a freaking jump button. Hold up, hold up. Tangent real quick. Do you know how many VR games have a freaking jump button? Like, not going to lie, out of my entire Steam VR game library of 250 games or so, <laughs> I can count maybe two or three. I'm not saying jump buttons work on every game, and not all games even need them or should have them, but come on. Back to what I was saying. Not only can I jump, but I can grab a pole, carry it around with me, and pole vault off of the ground. Why? Because of physics. And no, you don't have to play it that way. There's a walking path in case you're one of those people, but I have options and I like that. Cool. If I want to, I can grab a gun, hook it onto a ceiling oh, wow. pipe thing and shimmy around. Really? And there's actually a much bigger point here that I'll make in a moment. But awesome. to bounce off of the last paragraph, Boneworks just doesn't play it safe. It lets you move fast, slow, up, down, hold onto things, climb ladders, use geometry and physics to propel you to weird awesome. places. And it makes Boneworks feel special. Special in a way that not many other VR oh, games is, can make you feel. This is and quite different. look, there are places that Boneworks fails before I actually drop right. the bomb on why this is the best VR game ever and what game mechanics make it so, I do want to talk about what stops Boneworks from being perfect. Of course, more comfort options for people that do get sick wouldn't hurt other people's gameplay, so uh, we could use some of that. <laughs> but there's a bigger thing regarding Boneworks and its lore, and if we're talking about storyline, uh, Boneworks isn't very good. I mean, the world building is really interesting, and I've played the campaign more times than any other VR game that I own, but that's because of how the game plays, not because of how the game plays out. And just being real, one place that a handful of other VR games have Boneworks easily beat is in the story department. And before the Boneworks community comes at me about the nuance and masterfully minimal storytelling hammer. techniques used good and how see, there's bro. an insane lore outside of the game that connects all of Stress Level Zero's other games? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess. But was it in the Boneworks campaign levels, level 0 through 13? No. Well, then it kind of didn't happen as far as I'm concerned and as far as most other people are concerned. Video game franchises can do very well with extended- I mean, you know the great thing, Sketch, is we actually have tutorials on how to have a VR experience in Star Citizen, so you can check that out on the channel because a lot of people like my friend Planet Wally, uh, nice dude. Uh, does some VR content on Star Citizen that is really, really awesome. Um, 
So I'm looking forward to seeing Star Citizen develop more in the VR department. That's going to be fucking fantastic. I'm not familiar with a lot of the VR titles because I don't have a VR headset, but it's something that I might consider getting into. Uh, I might even use a lot of the money that we're raising right now for the new gaming system. I might even get like a VR headset with that. Uh, It might cut into the budget a bit, but I certainly would like to have VR experiences. I have not. Um, you know, a lot of people were telling me, Hey DG, I know you trash Elite dangerous a lot, but the VR experience is, is great. And, um, I recently heard though, that they aren't supporting VR anymore. Is that true? That elite dangerous is not supporting VR anymore. Uh, Ducky says he plays DS- DCS in VR, which would be fantastic. Oh my God, Ducky. Oh, you must have a blast, dude. That would be fucking fantastic. I love DCS. Uh, in fact, we're going to watch some DCS after this. But yeah, dude, like that, that would be wonderful. Hammer Dookie saying, I'm waiting for a helmet and gloves from Johnny Mnemonic and VR Star Citizen. Yeah, dude. Like I, I, I really want to get immersed in like some VR. I have never really done it. Uh, I only am going off of like experiences from other people. I really want to experience. Uh, Ash says Elite Dangerous isn't supporting itself these days. It's game over, man. And and I said that, didn't I, Ash? Haven't I been saying that for about two, three years, buddy? You know, they it's all elite and no dangerous. And it's such a sad thing because I really was a big fan of Elite Dangerous. I really was. And they just they just took a really wrong turn. Frontier and David just took a really wrong turn. Lore. Halo has a fantastic written lore outside of the franchise that just deepens the understanding of the main plot. But I can plop someone down to play Halo 3, never seeing Halo before, and they'll still get the gist. Same with Half-Life Alex or Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. They have pretty good stories all on their own. Boneworks, though, it gets a resounding hmm out of me next on the problems uh talking about game development playing it safe and how it's cool that boneworks didn't do that but at the same time the final boss is practically a ladder and that's not because the actual boss is a ladder that's because after you beat the game you have to climb a really tall ladder and it's kind of hard oh, and wow, it's moments man. like Vertigo this time. where i'm falling down after my arms are getting tired because i missed a rung and i've done this five times that i momentarily <laughs> ask myself how hard is it to just wow. do what half-life alex does just let me teleport like almost any other vr game and you know what i'm glad that they didn't do that because yeah. that's what everybody else yeah. does yeah. can you imagine working in a vr game studio and proposing that the last level of your game be completed with a 200 foot tall ladder the players have to climb rung by rung Dude, physically with their that's bo- actually quite inventive and 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 quite the final boss in vr right like a 200 foot ladder like you know you're in a simulation you know that there is ground beneath you, but you're so immersed in this that you know you're like 200 feet up and you feel like you're very far up because of the amount of effort that you're putting into climbing this thing. That is quite inventive. Body, it's almost comical. But after I was done doing just that, I realized something. That that felt really good. Not the slight nausea or sore arms, (laughs) but climbing a peak that seemed impossible until I did it. And it's honestly (laughs) one of the most hilarious but satisfying final bosses of any game I've ever played. And this serves as a perfect transition into the basis of this video. Wonderworks isn't a perfect game by any means, but it's absolutely my favorite. And in my opinion, the absolute best yeah, VR game that we've gotten play it. And this makes it's me because play of it. a simple principle that I've been building up to this entire video. Boneworks is more than a game. It's a system. And if right. you play Boneworks for any longer than a couple of hours, I experience. think you'll get what I'm saying. Right. VR is different from the traditional flat screen gaming that we've had for decades now. Right. Not because the screen is on your face, but because of the massive potential for interactions within the virtual world around you. Some games get this partially right, and some games get this horribly wrong. But but Boneworks is special because everything is like expected. The they Within minutes of gameplay, practically without any proper tutorial, the game just makes sense. From right. red buttons it's to intuitive. climbing sections, it's hard. It's, it's what every good game designer does. They make the gameplay intuitive so that it's just like natural progression. It's 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 how Super Mario Brothers became Super Mario Brothers, man, on the fucking uh, on the NES. Hard to put words exactly, but being in Boneworks feels Intuitive like being a child gameplay, dropped man. into a world with totally new yet recognizable laws of physics and rules of interactions. The rules are simple, but the possibilities are complex. Boneworks works because it's built entirely upon a set of basic rules that you just have to learn yourself. Everything has a weight, including your own body, and right, usually or, things right, that absolutely. look like good they design. weigh a 
their good, way good acting designers. the game like how you'd expect. Also, hands don't clip through objects. Objects don't clip through other objects, good. and your head certainly doesn't either. Red buttons do things, valves turn. Oh, and also, if there's an object in the game, it's interactable. Good. This is something I dislike about a lot of VR games that have props right. everywhere. Right. Sure, right. it looks pretty, but, but if only a fraction of them. everything is something that's interactable, it, it ruins my the immersion. suspension of disbelief that I'm in a right. virtual world right. gets really muddy. Yep, but yep, back yep. to climbing a ladder. On my first playthrough, I was frustrated that I couldn't scale it quickly, but the next time I was at that ladder, or any ladder, or any climbing surface you in the game it at all, simply. it was so easy. Right. And it's because, like a child dropped into a different world, I found my way by exploring and experimenting. And I only did that because I was able to buy the developers. The developers let me do things rather than restrict me. And this right. is the foundational basis of why I think Boneworks does so well. It's not masterfully crafted with perfect interactions, and however beautiful it is, it's also not the guided virtual tour that Half-Life Alex is either. Instead, it's a very well-structured virtual physics standard with a game built into All right, that Nomad, world. you have a great day, bro. Thanks for chilling out with us loss, today on stream, man. I really appreciate you. Apparent. Stress Level have a Zero, good day, the Boneworks developers gave the players a full body with good enough IK, gave them tools to essentially puppeteer a character in any way that they want, and allowed that character to interact with the environment in <laughs> not realistic ways, in but in believable ways that are predictable. And that led to me over and over thinking, I wonder if this works, or I wonder what happens if I do this, or if I can do this. And that's wonderful. And I'll also say right. this, like I what, do not- What Crystal uh, King is saying is absolutely true. Like the graphics right now in, in most VR uh, games, the ones I've I've seen, right? Because I haven't experienced it. They do have that 2007 kind of vibe feel with the graphics. I think a lot of the graphics on VR games are very rough for the most part. Uh, there are some exceptions. But like in, in a virtual world, like an open world like this, um, Boneworks is uh, I'm not too familiar with this title but like a lot of these open world kind of shooters and these types of games that are, are letting you interact with objects inside of the game I noticed that the the very 2070 kind of graphical look to them I, I I do think this will be something that gets improved as time you know moves forward but King is absolutely right Goldeneye. Speed Goldeneye VR. Games. Games. I'm just not a yeah. speedrunner. I'm yeah, the kind of go. person that plays a game at my own pace. I usually don't 100% <laughs> anything. And sadly, I usually don't even finish most games I start. Yet, for some weird reason, I oh, became wow. obsessed with speedrunning Boneworks. Don't know why, I think I was just intrigued by the game and its mechanics. And I was interested that it took me nine hours to complete the first time, yet the same game could be completed in 30 minutes with no glitches, no exploits, just by knowing the game and how the physics work slightly better. And I did just that. I beat the game in under 40 minutes, including that ladder that took me 40 minutes to even climb up the first time. It turns yeah. out, if you're smart, you don't even have to use a ladder. And for some reason, that idea just spoke to me. And of course, then there's the mods. The Boneworks modding community have pumped countless extra hours well, into cool. the game. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's cool. I don't think I need to go any further into this. But like, yeah, I, I definitely think I want to get into like VR gaming. It's something that I, I, I really think that, that we're going to be going into within the next decade is there's going to be a lot more uh, VR gaming content, VR gaming channels uh, on all platforms. And um, I don't know how that interface is going to work because a lot of times when I watch VR games, um, in a 2D environment, like on a, on a TV or on my phone, I find it a little unsettling, <laughs> you know, like I've seen a lot of 3D VR content before put on YouTube now currently, and it always kind of gives me like, just like personally, I'm like, uh, which makes me wonder like how I would react to VR in general, you know, I'm hoping I would really be immersed in, in, in dig it, you know, um, Crystal King saying, I'm really excited for City Skylines VR. Chrono says, VR gaming is dangerous to dads. <laughs> uh, Elden Ring, yeah, Explodo. I'm telling you, I haven't even bought it yet, dude. I'm so behind the times right now, dude. And I, I am going to. I, I will let you know. And and one thing I want to do, like, so that you guys know, I want to make you aware of, is we're raising funds for a new gaming system. And, uh, you know, once we hit that goal, uh, I'll be getting a new gaming rig and I'll start putting more gameplay on the channel because I know there's a lot of people here on the channel that have been wanting gameplay. So we will do that. And we will see <clears throat> how that goes. But personally, 
I will always love just to chill and hang out and watch what it is that you guys like to watch. Thank you for uh, putting everything in, the, in our Discord. If you're not part of our Discord, please join it. Uh, there is a section called Look at This DG, and uh, it really is the morning show. Like everything we're watching right now is suggestions from our community, from our members. And uh, you also have a chance to win on $25 every single month. Thank you, Santa Claus. Thank you, dude. Wow, look at you, dude. Woo, 25 months. 25 months with that fucking alert, dude. 25 months. Thank you, Santa Claus. I love you, bro. Let's get back to the show. 